Created back in the 1950s, Fortran was not the very first programming language to be created, but it was one of the first, and it was the first to be widely used. Because computers were so relatively slow back in those days, efficiency was a primary concern, and so Fortran is a static and compiled language, and much like C, it's basically a high-level language which is just the minimal step up from an assembly language. We can say that Fortran is the oldest language still in use, but we do have to qualify that a bit because the Fortran used today is very different from the one that was first used because over the years Fortran has been revised a number of times. So specifically what people use today is a revision of Fortran called Fortran 95 because it was created back in 1995. It's also somewhat debatable whether Fortran is really still in use, not because people aren't using it, but because the people who are using it are mainly scientists and engineers, not programmers. Professional programmers gave up on Fortran decades ago. Scientists and engineers, on the other hand, have kept with Fortran for basically two reasons. First, the not terribly good reason is that it's just tradition, and also scientists and engineers just don't want to have to bother to learn anything else. The better reason to use Fortran, though, is that it has very good support for the kind of math which scientists and engineers need to do. For instance, in science and engineering, you often make use of complex numbers, but complex numbers just don't come up in the sort of stuff that professional programmers are going to be doing. Because of its suitability for certain kinds of math, Fortran is used for things like doing climate forecasting on a supercomputer. Outside of this scientific and engineering niche, though, Fortran is really a bad choice, and, and no one uses it. So Fortran was the first notable programming language ever created, but Lisp was the second. And whereas Fortran was designed as a minimal step up from assembly, the design philosophy behind Lisp was effectively to take us as far as possible away from the minutia of assembly and in fact to just generally disregard any concerns about efficiency that stem from the limitation of the machine. What this resulted in is a language that contained dozens of ideas that really didn't become popular until the 1990s with the introduction of languages like Perl, Python, and PHP and so forth. Lisp was the first dynamic language and first interpreted language, and that meant, unfortunately, that Lisp was way ahead of its time because the computers of the era really just weren't fast enough to spare the amount of overhead it takes to have a dynamic interpreted language. Mostly for this reason, Lisp never became very widely used, but even though the hardware has now caught up, Lisp still hasn't caught on, mostly because languages like Python have integrated most of its big ideas and became popular instead. You also hear a lot of objections to using Lisp from people who don't like its prefix notation. Lisp uses the same notation style you saw in Pidgin rather than the more traditional infix notation, and many programmers just can't get over that. The prefix notation, though, is not a superficial aspect of Lisp, but it's an essential part because of how the, that notation meshes really well with another feature called macros. The Greek word macro translates as either big or far, and in programming, a macro is a mechanism for doing textual replacement, such that I can write something short and have it stand in place of something longer. Much like an abbreviation stands in for a longer word, except in this case, a macro can have a programmatic aspect, such that it's not just expanding an abbreviation into a full word or full string of text, it can be doing its expansion based upon some input text much like a function can have parameters that affect what the return value is. Macro expansion, though, is like a process that's done on the text before the code is even analyzed by the compiler or interpreter. The virtue of macros is that very often in programming you may find you're writing the very same thing over and over in code, or you're writing nearly the same thing but with slight variation. Often, you may be able to get rid of that repetition by creating a function, but sometimes that just doesn't work and that's where a macro might help. You can create a macro so that you can abbreviate some chunk of code that you find yourself writing repeatedly. Finally, in truth, there is no one language called Lisp, or at least there was the original language called Lisp created back in the 1950s, but it didn't last very long and wasn't used very widely. Instead, this original language Lisp was very influential and other people took those core ideas and created their own variants they created what we call dialects of Lisp.
The most notable and longest lasting of these were two created in the 70s, one called Common Lisp and one called Scheme, but there's also another recently created dialect called Clojure. Though not yet widely used, Clojure is very interesting and it's something we'll be learning later.